We go to the third inning at City Field. Mets with a two nothing lead on the night when the Mets have retired the number of Mike Piazza. The honoree joins us in the booth. Mike, how are you? It's so great to see you. This must have been the most incredible week for you. It's uh, it's been very draining emotionally, <laughs> and uh, just wonderful though. I mean, I I'm probably going to look back when I get home in a few weeks with my remote, my feet up on the couch, and go, "What happened? What happened this week?" <laughs> Euphoria, amazing. You know, I, I watched your Cooperstown speech on Sunday, and I, I you made the point uh, during your press conference tonight about how as we get older, we we become more emotional and, mm -hmm. and realize how quickly the time passes. But it was it was really quite heartwarming to, to see how much impact emotionally that that day had on. you. Yeah, and I think and Keith probably attested this when you look back in your career and the people in your career in your life that have helped you that at the time you didn't know. And once you step away from the game and start to reflect the reflect a little bit it starts to become heavier and heavier and you realize man you know what that guy he was he was really in my corner and he helped me out and it might have been just a little thing it might have been just a little piece of advice but you know looking back it just um, it, it, it does make you emotional especially uh, you know when you step away from the game a little bit I've got to ask you the question when you first came here it had to be a very uh, Unsettling season for you, man. 98. Yeah. You went to three teams, a pit stop in Miami. Yeah. But I remember you look at your numbers, you hit 348 <laughs> your first year here with 79 RBIs and 109 games, which on a full season, you probably would have driven 125 runs. Mm -hmm. And your average was up there. But I remember when you first came, oh, yeah. you struggled. How did you handle that being here in front of the new crowd and all the expectations? And you just thought you struggled so much early. Well, I mean, as you all know, it's it's just like I was pressing, and I got here. I wanted so much to make them to cheer and to have a positive impact right away. And obviously, um, at the time, leaving the Dodgers was a bitter divorce. So I wanted to, you know, prove to them that they made a mistake. Um, Johnson can't handle the low throw by Flores, and Reynolds will move into second. Well, I'm, I'm a fan Flores now. Sorry, I'm going to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. We're not supposed to do right, that. No, it's true, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so as you mentioned, it's just one of those things naturally when you get to a new environment, especially New York, too. I mean, see, that's the thing where I think it's even that much more special because the cauldron that is New York, and you know, you're here. I mean, everything you do and, and everything, everyone's watching you, and I, and I felt like, man, you know, I. I, every, I feel the pressure. Uh, I felt the pressure every day, and I just finally was able to get back to basics and say, "Hey, take a base at the right field, take a walk, hmm. get back into that zone." I was just going to ask you what you did to come out of it, and uh, that just answered my question right there. <laughs> Hundley drives one to center, and Reggiano's there for the first out. I, I, I was just thinking about this. I remember back in '98 during the season when you had those initial struggles, and mm. and some of the fans were booing, and there was a lot of angst on the part of Mets fans. Like, can't prove Piazza. Yeah, he might not. It was very not, awkward. He might, he might not resign here, <laughs> but was, you, but you did resign. Was I there did. ever a, a time when you thought that maybe this wasn't right for you? Well, of course there was, especially the fact you know as you said there was it was contentious in the beginning, and and I started thinking. I mean, you're always going to have self doubt, especially after a trade like that. And he's man, did I make the right? You know, should I stay with the Dodgers? I don't know. All this doubt and turmoil, and then finally, it goes back to you know a little lesson that you know. Roy Campanella before he passed away I had some time to pick his brain in spring training and when I talked about expectations he goes Mikey just play the game you know what I mean like don't worry about everything else outside of the game contracts and the media and whatever just he said just play the game that day and enjoy that day and it just kind of clicked when I went back and started thinking hey just get back to basics just hit the ball the other way like I said take a walk and it started producing. You know, we, we talked a lot about emotion and, and certainly you were emotional during your speech in mm. Cooperstown and there were a couple of moments tonight when I thought, especially when they were chanting your name and yeah. I thought you might lose it. Was <laughs> is there one thing that stands out to you as the most emotionally poignant part of, of these these two nights, these two days that, that you've been celebrated? Well, I think about it, as I mentioned, my father had a major stroke a few years ago, you know, when they when I went to the Mets Hall of Fame, and he was really bad at that point. I mean, to get him up here was a process. Um, 
So when I start thinking about how blessed I am to have him still here with us, and that he was able to witness this because he was so much a part of it. I mean, it, it, he's the only reason why I'm here, to be honest with you. I mean, he drove me, put me in that cage, was always behind the scenes, almost to, you know, where it was an obsession. And, and today it may not be the most, you know, politically correct parenting, but that was just the way he was. And um, I have to thank him for it. So the fact that, you know, he's here, God, God, you know, blessed us. The fact that he's still here and he's made a great recovery is, that's when I start thinking about God because dad, this is you, this is us. And that was the message I tried to convey to him. Like now dad, just enjoy life. It's time to, time to settle down and, and, and smell the roses. As I said, you know, like you probably heard this question a million times. But I'm sure the fans want to know. Of all your seasons that you played here in New York, was there one particular season that you look back that you just really enjoyed and was, you've had so many big hits, but mm -hmm. is there one particular hit in your career that you look back on with great pride? Well, I think coming here uh, in 98 and the team we put together in 99 was a special team. And as a catcher, I really enjoyed playing behind that infield or watching that infield because it was almost like, I don't know how many double plays we had. It was just like, okay, boom, ground ball. I, I didn't even cover the plate. I was just walking off because I took it for granted how good they were. And it was very special. 2000 was bittersweet because it was a good season for me, you know, personally. But obviously, you know, to lose the World Series was was one of the disappointments. I I just think that home run um, on the July on June 30th game, which the July 4th when everyone stayed, because that was like in, incredibly. The energy was just so over the top, and that was when everybody was like, "All right, you need to hit a home run here," and I did. So you know how hard that is. Do you did you feel the pressure? I mean, you were the guy. You had a lot of good players playing behind. You. Yes. I mean, Olaru was one heck of a hitter. It was awesome. Very underrated. Yeah. But did did you feel that pressure that you had to get the big hit? And how did you handle it? Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, those guys picked me up a lot. And, you know, Fonzie and Johnny and Cliffy tonight. I mean, obviously, I played with Cliffy. It's, it, these guys were able to, when they get some hits, take the pressure off you a little bit. So, you know, when you're up there in a situation that it's maybe, you know, it's, it, we have a two-run lead and I could blow the game open is different than it's tied, you know what I mean, when you're not swinging well. So the pressure is not as intense where, you know, I used to yell at Johnny Olerud a couple times. He'd take a 2-2 pitch on the corner. I'd be like, Johnny, swing the bat, get a hit, man, you know. And then he would walk on like a, a nine-pitch at bat, and then i hit into a double play. <laughs> I mean, like, you know what I mean? I remember, like, in my mind yelling at but still learning from him in that situation was great. So that little mental judo, I guess I used to call it, you know, just, just trying to get yourself in the right frame of mind to come through. You have to rationalize a lot of things. So that, for me, I look back, it was like, man, it was, when I, when I was finally done, I was like, man, I'm exhausted. I need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you've heard a lot of ovations in your life, but standing at a podium in the middle of a ballpark with 40,000 people chanting your name and screaming wow. at you while you're standing in a suit, what, what does that feel like? Man, I, I mean, it was, the, the, it was really funny because my wife was sitting there and my brothers, and my brother Tommy played a little professional baseball. And I said, this is pretty cool, right? And I said, you imagine after you take hit a bomb, you know, to, to get the lead and hear that? I go, and they were like, wow, it blew them away. So to have my family kind of experience that euphoria a little bit, and even my wife, she was like, I can't, I can't believe this feel. This is it's like some kind of, you know, like some kind of high. And it was, and it is. And, and that's what, to me, is so special that I can share it, you know, with, with my family. Because, again, you know, they, they see you suffer. They see you struggle. They know that the games when I was coming home and I would, I was depressed. I would talk. I want to, I just wanted to go to bed. And, and so to have that opposite tonight is, is really special. How does it feel to be the all time in the history of this game, over 100 years old, well over, to be the greatest hitting catcher of all time and the, the hit the most home runs? How does that feel for you? How, does that, has that sunk in? That one, it's a great accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of, it makes me feel that the times where I sacrificed, you know, the times where I made good personal decisions to get my rest, take care of my body, not go out all night was sometimes when I knew the temptation was there. And the guys were like, come on, let's go. And I said, you know what? I got to get home, get to bed, because I know I have a job to do tomorrow, which a lot of guys made that mistake. Um, it, it, it just vindicates everything. It makes you feel like, man, it was all worth it. Even times where, you know, you really wanted to have fun and do things and, and you fought against it. It's like, this is why you do it, because you know in the end something 
good will happen. Blackman rolls one to the right side and Walker's going to make the play to end the inning. Mike, oh, it is always fantastic all to right. see you. Congratulations yeah. on all the Thank honors, and all me. the fame, and the great job. Retired. Love watching you guys, man. So, think of me. I'll be down in Miami with the remote and watching you guys, and uh, hopefully we can hey, get this team. Enjoy going. your soccer team. I will. It's been a blast. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. The great Mike Piazza on the occasion of his number being retired, joining the very small pantheon in Mets history.